This is Project 20 of Hacking with Swift. We're back to SpriteKit again, and this time we're going to let users create fireworks displays using their fingers. They'll touch fireworks of the same color, then shake the device to make them explode. For more information, see the website hackingwithswift.com, where you can find this video and all the videos in this series on sale in high resolution. They look fantastic or as downloadable ebooks containing lots more hands-on tutorial information to really advance your Swift knowledge. You can also find me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. Follow me there. Get in touch if you have problems, questions, suggestions, whatever. I would love to hear from you. Make sure you have the files for this project already downloaded from the website. Then go ahead and fire up Xcode and choose Create New Project, iOS, Application, Game. Uh, I'll call this one Project 20 because that's what it is. Uh, Swift Sprite Kit iPad is exactly right, so press Next and Create. We're going to start with our usual Sprite Kit cleaning system. So uh, disable the portrait and upside down orientation, just landscape. Zap the spaceship from the images asset catalog. Then in game scene.swift, remove the code from inside, then move to view. And from inside, touches began, but leave the method stubs behind. Then import the code you got from the website. Uh, here we go. So the helper file plus the content for this project. Copy items, create groups, awesome. And this contains just our assets we'll be using in the game. Make sure you do choose iPad 2 and not iPad Air for your simulator because it runs much, much faster. So to get up and running very quickly, we're going to work on three methods required to launch some fireworks. Firstly, did move to view. This will create a new timer class that launches fireworks every six seconds. Then create firework, which will launch exactly one firework at a specific position on the screen. And finally, launch fireworks, which will create which will call create fireworks multiple times and therefore creates fireworks spreads. First, the easy stuff. We've got a load of properties to add to our game scene. First up, we're gonna add our game timer. So this is called game timer. It's a new class called NS timer. NS, of course, is next step. It's the old school way of uh, declaring a timer. It's actually the current way of doing it too. Uh, it's just it lasted that long. It's that good. Uh, so var game timer equals NS timer. Awesome. Then we'll make an array of uh, fireworks. We'll do var fireworks is uh, uh, an array of SK node like that. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, some edge properties too. So we'll say uh, var left edge equals minus 22. Actually, let, it's a constant, of course, always left 22. So then let bottom edge equals minus 22. And let right edge equals 1024 plus 22. There are a few interesting things here. Um, well, three of them to be precise. Why 22 everywhere? The answer is because the rocket picture, which is a very exciting rectangle. Uh, if I open that in something more powerful, like Photoshop, for a second, uh, so content rocket at 2x, put into Photoshop. Uh, this is the picture that we use for the fireworks as they're appearing on the screen. And you will see this picture, when it loads, is square. The, the, the rocket itself, my amazing uh, Photoshop skills, this is what I do with uh, all of Creative Suite, I draw these squares in white colors. Uh, is, it's long and thin, but there's a white square around it. And that is, in our case, for at 2x, 88 cross by 88 high, like that, which is 44 by 44 in non retina space, i.e. points, which is, if you remember, the smallest tappable area for any iOS app. So uh, it uses that uh, thing there. So 44 is the size of it. 22, therefore, is half the size. And because SpriteKit measures things from the center of stuff, that means off screen, just off screen for the rocket. That would mean the rocket starts half on screen, half off screen. So minus 22 puts off the left edge, minus 22 bottom edge, and the right edge uh, is 1024 plus 22. This is the second interesting thing. Why do we not just write in there 1046? Uh, the answer is quite simple. Uh, 1024 is the size of an iPad screen. So you can see at a glance that is iPad screen size plus rocket size. That's a bit clearer to someone who comes to your code later what it means. And the third interesting thing is why do they, these three properties need to exist at all? They're just numbers. You can put minus 22 later on. And you could do, but then you have what's called a magic number, which is a number like, you know, minus 22 appearing randomly your code somewhere else. You're like, what does, what does minus 22 mean? Why is it not minus 26 or minus 32? You don't know. 
having left edge, bottom edge, right edge makes it very, very clear. So you can, you, you'll see later on when we use these things, it makes the code much, much clearer. Next, we'll have a score value. This is our usual thing. So it's an integer, it's zero by default with a, a property observer, and you can just put in your code here. Um, I'm not gonna do it for you. I've done it before several times. You know how to make property observers for the score. Same for a game label, a uh, score label. Knock yourself out, go ahead and do that yourself. Uh, so to get the whole thing moving in a, a visual way, we're going to start off with a background picture. We also want to have, as well, the game timer. So you've got this plain picture in the background, this thing, uh, as well as a timer ticking away, invisibly behind it, firing rockets. Let's start with the timer. That's the uh, interesting stuff. Uh, we'll say in here, game timer equals nstimer.scheduledTimer with time interval. There are two options here, invocation or target. Choose target, not invocation. That's an older way of doing it. We don't care anymore about that. Uh, interval, uh, how frequently to fire stuff. We'll say six seconds. So once every six seconds, do something. What should it do? It should call self, select a launch fireworks. Use info nil, repeats true. So keep on repeating. So that will call launch fireworks on self every six seconds. Can I read it backwards in some respects? That's our importance of the game timer. The background is old code. We've done this every, every time since uh, project 11. Uh, I'll do it again for you here. So let background equals SK sprite node, image named background. Then background.position equals CG point with X 512, Y384. Background blend mode equals dot replace. And oops, background uh, or add child background like that. Boom. That is our basic game up and running for the move to view. Add a background and make the timer call launch fireworks every six seconds. So launch fireworks, like I said, will call another method called create firework. So launch fireworks creates many, many fireworks. Create firework creates one firework. So create firework does most of the actual work. Uh, this, this, this needs to do quite a few things, actually. It needs to uh, create the container node for the firework. If you remember the Swifty Ninja game I made, uh, we had the bombs exploding and such. Uh, they had a container node, and inside that, a uh, bomb pitcher, and, and as well, a fuse uh, emitter. So that the, the combination of those made a single bomb node. Uh, so that was Project 17. This is the same thing here, and it's for exactly the same reason. If we add the fuse of a firework, you know, a sort of spark flying in the air, to the firework itself, it'll look quite strange when it's tapped. And you didn't mean to tap the fuse, you meant to tap something else. Uh, and in this game, tapping correctly is very important, just as with the bombs. So having the fuse separately is important. So we'll have a parent node again that contains the firework, rocket sprite, and the emitter node. We'll give the fireworks different colors, uh, cyan, green, or red. Uh, I've chosen cyan rather than pure blue because it's much more visible on a dark, starry background picture. Then we'll use UI Bezier path to maneuver the rockets into a particular direction. In our case, it could be straight up in a fan, left to right or right to left. And then we'll add the particles and add it to our fireworks array. So let's have a look at the actual code for that. We want to say func create firework. Uh, this is going to have a uh, a required variable called x movement so hash or octothorpe or pound sign x movement which is a cg float because sprite kit prefers cg floats to normal floats then x is an int and y as an int so this this means how much by x should this firework move and they all move y straight up you know up the way but x could mean going left to right or right to left or not at all then a position to create it at uh, so we'll start off with let node equals sk node. Just create an empty node to hold our fireworks and position it at cg point x is x and y is y. So the thing that we passed in here. Then create the firework sprite. So let firework equals sk sprite node image named rocket. That's at my amazing rectangle. I think I still have here. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Just admire my amazing Photoshop skill. Not. Uh, that's the rocket picture. Then we'll name this firework, firework. That's the thing we want people to select and explode. That's the important stuff. And add that to our parent node, like that. Then we'll do the new stuff. We wanna say this firework should either be blue or cyan, green or red. Right now it is just pure white as you can see. And we want colored fireworks because the skill is going to be how many fireworks of the same color can you select in each spread. You get more points the more you select. 
To do this, we'll say switch random int min zero at max two. If it's zero, we're going to set a blend color for the firework sprite. So we'll say firework dot color equals UI color dot cyan color. And that will make it cyan colored as much as we ask it to. And that's done by saying firework uh, dot color blend factor equals one, where one means fully cyan, naught means it's normal color, 0.5 means half of each. And that, so that will recolor that white sprite here to be fully cyan. So it now looks to the user like a cyan firework. Now, of course, this is very helpful to, for doing things like having you know, 25 different player colors, for example. But in this game, it's pretty critical, as you'll see shortly. So that's case zero. I'll copy and paste this a few times. Uh, so we've got one and two. Uh, and you know, the default case, which can't actually happen, but it's fine. Default, just break. Add more colors later, perhaps. Uh, this next one, we want to make it so that the firework is a green color, like that. And then the third one, the third one, well, second case, is red color. Still with color blend factor one, one, one. So it'll either be cyan fully, green fully, or red fully. Default break. Then we'll create a UI Bezier path that should move the firework. So we'll say let path equals UI Bezier path. Path dot move to point CG point X zero Y zero. So start initially where the firework is, and then path add line to point CG point. X is going to be X movement, and Y should be one thousand. So this will move the firework 1,000 points up over a period of time. This will move it to the left or to the right, or not at all, if you pass in zero, by whatever is passed in here. So the, the launch fireworks method we'll write shortly can actually create fireworks moving in different directions by just passing in different numbers for X movement here. And that's, that's our path, just moves the fireworks by a certain amount. Then we'll use a new SK action type called follow path, which is really, really cool because it has one special feature like I'll show you now. SK action dot follow path. Uh, you want this uh, speed option, not duration. Duration dictates how long it takes to move across the path. Speed says how fast it should move along the path. Uh, so in, in duration, uh, iOS figures out speed for you. In speed, iOS figures out the duration for you. Uh, speed is better because if you think about it, we're moving potentially left to right to the same Y point. Uh, so we're going up a thousand and X movement across or X movement zero. We're actually moving across, sorry, this sounds sounding awfully mathematical suddenly. We're moving across the hypotenuse, <laughs> if you want to be technical. And uh, it means if we use duration, then diagonal ones will move faster than straight ones, which is a bad thing. So you want to use speed instead. Anyway, follow path, path. We're going to pass in our path as CG path. Remember, uh, sprite kit is separate to UI kit, so you can't use UI colors, you must use CG colors. You may be interested to hear, as a micro fact for you, you can use UI colors of Sprite Kit because Sprite Kit has a built in system for handling uh, what's called an SK color, which behind the scenes can either be an NS color on OS X or a UI color on iOS. Diversions, I hate diversions. That's the only one I think there's a whole series anyway. Uh, as offset, that means is this movement relative to the node or are these absolute numbers? And actually, these are relative to the node's position. So offset is true. Orient the path is the really cool feature of follow path. I'll, sh I'll set it to true, and then shortly when I make run the, the thing for the first time, I'll put it to false so you can see what it's done. Then 200 speed, and then run that on our node. So node run action move. Then we're gonna add some sparks behind the uh, fireworks. It looks like it's going off uh, with flames, or well, not flames, sparks. So uh, let particle path equals ns bundle dot main bundle dot path for resource uh, that one and then uh, the resource is called fuse of type SKS uh, force unwrap I know exists then let emitter equals ns oops ns keyed unarchiver dot unarchive object with file and we want particle path cast it as SK emitter node emit position uh equals and for this you want to use cg point x is zero i.e center of the firework uh y should be minus 22 knock it down from the bottom with a slight typo here slight typo uh so it'll put the bottom of the firework around the center of the firework with minus uh, 22 y 
Then add that to the node, uh, emitter. Then add the whole thing uh, to our array of fireworks. This is important for later. And then add that to our, uh, the whole thing to our game scene. So that is the create firework method. It's not too hard. We'll come back to orient the path shortly so you can see what it does. It's very, very cool. The next one is a long method that's actually really, really simple. It's long, it does the same code again and again and again. And this is the big launch fireworks method. So as a reminder, create firework is used to create one firework with fuse, with movement. Launch fireworks will launch multiple fireworks in a spread by calling this thing five times, once for each firework. So let's kick off funk launch fireworks, open brace. Uh, I'm going to put in here a constant for movement amount. So let movement amount uh, CG float equals 1800. I made it a constant because we use it a lot of times. Uh, and actually, it's nice having it as a constant. So you can just toy with it and see what works best. And all the code changes rather than copy and pasting a lot of things. So we'll do switch random int min, three, uh, min zero max three. That's because I have four types of movement. We either go straight up, we either go uh, up in a fan, we either go left to right, or we go right to left. So we have case zero, and this is going to call uh, create firework five times. It's going to fire uh, five straight up. As a little comment there for ourselves later. We'll say create firework. X movement is zero because it's going straight up. Uh, X is 512. Y is bottom edge. This is why that constant's helpful. It's not always minus 22, minus 22, minus 22. Uh, it's much easier having it as a uh, constant we can just refer to here. I'll copy paste that five times. There we go. And I'm going to put in some modifiers here. So the first one's smack in the middle. Second one's off by 200 to the left. And then 100 to the left. Then 100 to the right. Then 200 to the right. And that's our initial case. K0, five, five, fireworks straight up. Copy and paste that four times for the possible ways. So we've got four things now. Case one, uh, case two, case three. I would suggest you are very careful now because it has comments in there. The comment obviously applies to this first one right now. You will want to change this comment because a comment is usually helpful. But if it's wrong, if you've copied and pasted it, it's actually unhelpful. It will hold you back because if the comment is outdated, it's stale compared to the actual code. So someone reading that comment will say, oh, I can see what it does and ignore the code and they could be wrong. So uh, case one is going to do uh, fire five in a fan. Then case two, fire five, left to right. And case three, fire five, right to left. This is not very hard. Uh, in fact, it's very similar to what we have already. So going in a fan, we'll also create them with the same X and Y coordinates. That hasn't changed. But we're gonna add a little bit of movement to these things. So the first one will be at zero X movement, then minus 200, then minus 100, then plus 100, then plus 200. So what happens is, oh, actually plus 200. What happens is it starts on the left and moves to the left. So far left, move far left, start on the slightly left, move slightly left, start slightly right, move slightly right, start on the far right, move far right. So it, it creates this lovely fan thing, you'll see it shortly, it looks really, really nice. And there's space here for case four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million to add as many more cases as you want to do cool firework spreads. It's down to you. Uh, for left to right, uh, we need to do something different. We should say movement amount each time for X movement. It's a constant defined up here because it makes it much easier to sample different kinds of different speeds of movement, different directions of movement for these angled ones. And then for uh, right to left, it should be minus X movement. like this there we go boom like that nice and simple now the x and y things have to change here too because when you're firing left to right we want to fire not in the middle of the screen but from left edge like that so you can make all these left edge they all fire just off the edge of the screen to the left and then we want to space them out so we have the here y bottom edge is fine but the one up from that, we want to have bottom edge plus 100, then plus 200, then plus 300, then plus 400. So it'll kind of, if you imagine a screen here, it's one creates from here going that way, one's here going that way, one's here going that way. So they all start going the same direction, but they start going up the screen like that. 
And then for the uh, Fire 5 right to left, it's very, very similar. So it's uh, uh, instead of left edge, you want to use the uh, right edge instead. So we'll say right edge, right edge, right edge. I'm just copy and pasting now. Right edge and right edge. And then bottom edge plus 400, plus 300, plus 200, plus 100, plus nothing at all. That finishes the launch fireworks method. So it just calls create firework many, many times, depending on the kind of shape you want to do. This should, all being well, unless it's gone hideously wrong. Ah, so of course, switch isn't exhausted, fine. So default uh, is yours for then later, break. This should, all being well, run. So I press build and run. And it will launch the iPad 2 simulator, which is good, the fast one. And hopefully, if you count to uh, six seconds, so one, two, three, four, five, six, more or less. Hopefully, fireworks. And that's the fan shape. You see, it's kind of moving to the left a bit and moving to the right a bit. Gorgeous shape, that one. Then, going from right to left. Fantastic, looks lovely. Look at all the different colored stuff you can see. Nice bright blue as well. Then, going straight up. And if we're lucky, maybe left to right, but we'll see. Now, see, that's, that's random, that randomness for you. You never know what you're going to get, you know? Life's a box of chocolates and all that. Okay. So, that's not bad. I know it's a fair amount of coding, all this stuff here, but the result is looking good so far, I think. I think that looks really, really nice. The next thing we're going to do is let you just swipe to select fireworks. So, then I have to try and tap on the red one, on that red one, on that red one, and explode those three. Uh, because you only select one color at a time. So, they'll go swipe, get all the blue ones, explode those, then explode the red one. That's the goal. Three blue, uh, two red, and so forth. That's the goal here. So the challenge will be to select detonate uh, as many as they can of one color at a time. And we're gonna really bias the scores. So if you get one point for detonating one firework, you'll get more points for detonating, detonating more fireworks. So if you do two blues at the same time, you might get say three points, detonate five blues at the same time, you might get you know 50 points or 20 points, whatever it is, a lot more points. So there's a very, very strong encouragement to users there to get as many of the same color as possible. So we're going to write a new method called check for touches. And because this is important, this is the actual work of highlighting fireworks, but it could be called from two places. Touches began, I used a, a tapping on fireworks, or touches moved, which means they're swiping on fireworks. So rather than put the code in two places, we have a separate method called check for touches that will be called from both of those places. So in your code, let's write a new method. We'll do func check for touches. This will take the NS set that we always get from touches began or touches moved. I haven't really looked at it much yet. Uh, it's this thing here. NS set is just an NS array where every item is unique, which makes it actually a lot faster to search through, but that's beside the point. It's a set of stuff, an array of stuff. We can say touches, NS set. You'll get some touches to work with. And we'll put our usual code in here, which is, you know, let touch equals touches dot any object as UI touch. Then let lo oops, let location equals touch dot location in node self and pull out the nodes of the touch. So let nodes equals nodes at point location as an array of SK node. Uh, you may recall this has to be an array of SK node, not sprite, uh, sprite nodes in there because it could be a fuser tapped as well or if you add your score label electron, it could be a label node in there. We don't know what it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through this array of nodes See if it's an SK sprite node, i.e. one of our fireworks. And then say, if it's a firework, mark it as selected. And to do that, we'll change its name from firework to be selected, so we know it's selected. We'll also change color blend factor to zero. So color blend factor, as a reminder, is what gives these things cyan, green, or red color, because we have color blend factor one each time. Making it zero, we'll revert it back to look like this, white. So it'll be obviously chosen. The user will see at a glance, that's chosen because it's white. So let's go ahead and do that in code. That is basically all of it there, just in English. So let for node in nodes, if node.isKindOfClass, sk sprite node.self. So is this an sk sprite node? If so, let's get hold of it. So let's set sprite equals node as sk sprite node. I just cast it as an sk sprite node. And that's important because only SK sprite nodes have a color blend factor to work with. 
So we have to cast it in there to be sure we are uh, modifying a color, otherwise it wouldn't work. We then say uh, if sprite.name is firework, then sprite.name equals selected. This thing is selected and sprite.colorBlendFactor equals zero. Show it to the user, this is actually selected. Uh, and that's, you know, nothing, nothing new, let's face it. Uh, all we're doing is ensuring that it, it's working correctly to mark as selected, you know, don't call it a firework anymore, and adjust color blend factor. Very, very straightforward. But there's the interesting catch here. I can run this back now and it should actually work. Actually, it shouldn't work. You have to actually call check with touches, don't I? You know, so I, I want to call check with touches, so fine. I'll go into uh, touches began. I'll take it out of there, put it at the bottom so you've got more space for it. So in touches began, touches... Oh, touches began. We'll just call check for touches uh, and pass in touches. In fact, you should really say super dot touches began just in case, just in case iOS wants to do anything with it. I think it very rarely does, but no harm being sure. And then uh, touches moved as well. So they can swipe or they can tap. Super touches moved. Touches. Oh, touches. Yeah, thanks for that co completion. Touches moved. Touches. And then uh, with event, Oops, with event, event like that. So now that whether they swipe or not, it will call check for touches, touches. Brilliant. This should actually work to begin with. So hopefully, again, count to six seconds, give me a nice bit of time to show some rules at the beginning. You should see some fireworks. I can now hopefully swipe to select. But notice this, I can also swipe multiple colors. So I'm going to go green, green, great, and now red. It's not deselecting the previous colors. Now the whole point of this game, the skill factor is to go green, green, skip the red, green. And if you can just swipe across all of them, there is no skill here at all. It's just basically how fast can you swipe across the screen, which the answer is very, very fast. Although I would say, if you are testing inside simulator, it is harder than testing on a device because touching your finger is much, much faster than trying to move a mouse around and click on stuff. So if you're playing this game thinking, oh, this is way too hard, no testing the device. Make sure we test it there. Anyway, we can test, we can select multiple colors, which is lame. That's the, the game rather defeated somewhat. We're going to add a second loop here, a loop with inside a loop, to spot any previously selected node that has a different color and then deselect it. Now you need to be careful. If you had a loop uh, of, say, 100 items, that's okay. Cool. 100 items that can whiz through very, very quickly, not a problem. If you've got another loop that does 200 items, that's okay, fine, that's perfectly fine. But when you put one loop inside the other, it looks like this. You say for i in uh, naught to up to 100, then for j in naught uh, up to 200, do stuff. So you're putting one loop inside another loop. This will actually execute 20,000 times. So, because it goes through here, it's okay, i is zero, run this thing 200 times, then make I1, run this thing 200 times, I3, 200 times, I10, you know, 200 times, I100, I99, 200 times. So it's doing tons and tons of work out of nowhere by having this nested or in a loop. It's doing lots of work, and that almost certainly is not fine, having 20,000 iterations of your loop happening. Uh, in our case, though, we're going to loop through the nodes array twice, and you know, in the worst case, there'll be, say, 10 fireworks on the screen. So we'll loop through it 10 times, and for every one of those, loop through it 10 more times. So looking about 100 is the absolute maximum here. Um, so it's quite all right, it's quite safe. So what's gonna happen is this inner loop's gonna check to make sure a player can select only one firework at a time. And this is actually really easy to do because we've renamed the fireworks to be selected. So before we do this code here, we, before we say uh, sprite name equals selected, we can insert uh, another loop. We're going to say for parent in fireworks. So loop through every item in our current fireworks array, not just the ones that are tapped. This is the ones that are tapped on, and this is uh, the ones uh, that are in our total array of fireworks. So realistically, you're looking at you know hardly any loops here, really. Anyway, uh, let firework equals. So I've called this thing parent because it pulls out the parent node, which is an empty SK node, which holds the firework and also holds the fuse. So we can say let parent dot children zero like that as sk sprite node that will find the first child of the parent node which is the firework sprite and now we can say if firework dot name is selected 
So this is a selected firework and the firework.color is not equal to sprite.color, then this was selected. So we can say firework.name is firework again, deselected. And firework.color blend factor equals one. Give it back its old color. And that's all it takes. So this ampersand ampersand combines the left if and the right if to make a double if essentially. So only if this is true and this is true, do this code. Uh, and it, it uh, behind the scenes, iOS will do uh, short circuit evaluation of this. If the firework is not called selected, it will never check the color value. It just says, no, don't put, bother doing it. They can't both be true if this one's not true. So it's very, very fast. Uh, and you can see now why we're using color blend factor rather than just saying, uh, give them an actual color. So just recolor it, you know, green or blue and then set the color to be white. We never set the color to be white. We just change color blend factor back to being zero or one because the color here is being stored. We can still compare with it. Even though the blend factor is zero, we can still compare it against our other sprite. And that's the entire method. So with that being called inside, touches began and touches moved, that should be correct. So to recap, we go through every node that was tapped or swiped right now in this current movement. Is it a sprite node? Yes, cast it as one so we can check its color value. If it's a firework, loop through all the firework parent nodes in our array, uh, find its firework graphic inside, which is the first child at SK sprite node. If it was selected, because it would change its name to be selected, and it's a different color than the one we just tapped, make it back to be firework again and reset its color blend factor. And that should be it, that should be it. So go ahead and uh, press run, all being well. I should be able to swipe after a few seconds when fireworks actually fire. I can swipe to select some, I'll just tap on some, so green, green, brilliant, blue. Deselects the two green, select the blue, fantastic. It worked perfectly. So blue, 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 brilliant, red, oh no, deselect. So the goal now is to try and select the colors appropriately. So I'll do blue, blue, green, perfect. And then I'll explode those and say blue, blue, blue. All right, green, green, green even. So it's now working very, very nicely. This game is coming together. Fantastic. So next up, what should happen if the player does not destroy a firework? So if they get to the top of the screen, you know, up here somewhere, they hit the top of the screen and it hasn't been exploded, we shouldn't keep them in the game. They're pointless now. They shouldn't just keep on flying. Instead, we want to destroy them automatically. So after a certain point is reached, and I'm going to use one way off screen, like 900 points up. So the screen 768 high, I lose 900. If they're still there at 900 points up, um, then get rid of them. Now remember, we aren't only moving them to 1,000, so 900, you can't go much higher than that. Now, when you remove things from arrays, a curious quirk happens. So you need to remove things backwards. You need to loop through the array backwards to destroy fireworks. Uh, if you want to find out why that is, please buy the book. I go into more detail there. Um, all we're going to do now is modify the update method here so that we loop through the array of fireworks backwards and remove the ones that have gone too far. So they're off the screen fully. So we'll say var i equals fireworks dot count minus one. I is greater than or equal to zero minus minus i. Oops, like that. So that starts at the number of fireworks there are, minus one, because it's a zero-based array. Counts down into including zero, removing one at a time. Then we'll do for that firework equals fireworks i. If firework.position.y is greater than 900, so it's way off screen. We can put in a little comment here, actually. So this uses a position high above so that rockets can explode off screen. So as, for example, if they're at you know, 780 and the player explodes them, we'll create a little particle effect for the explosion that will still be visible on the screen. So this makes it way off screen, so way beyond where the explosion will be visible. Then we remove it from our array. So we'll do uh, fireworks dot remove at index i and firework dot remove from parent. So that zaps it from the array automatically when it goes way off screen. Okay. Time for the best part of the game, which is making things go bang, using particle systems. So we need to create a few things here. Firstly, a method to explode a single firework, then a method to explode all the fireworks, which will of course call the single firework explosion method. 
and finally some code to detect and respond to the device being shaken because you can catch device shake as an action and act upon it and in our game that will mean explode the fireworks now to be fair this is really not needed in this game having a button on the screen says explode is a better experience for users but i'm being sneaky this is my way to force more learning upon you i'm always trying to squeeze more swift in there somewhere and in this case i want you to learn how to use a shake gesture gesture so in your own apps you can use it more effectively for now humor me use a shake gesture and by all means later on you know tomorrow it's your game take it out and put in a button or whatever else you feel like uh, if you are using shake gesture give it a good shake you have to really go for it uh, and that's why it causes a problem you have to really shake it quite hard which is a disconcerting user experience anyway let's start with the easy stuff exploding a single firework so funk explode firework oh, explode firework uh, this takes a firework which is an sk node that's our container node and it's going to destroy just one firework so it's going to say let particle path equals you should be copying and pasting this really just go ahead and copy and paste ns bundle main bundle path for resource explode of type sks copy and paste please let emitter equals ns keyed unarchiver dot unarchive object oops with file is particle path cast as sk emitter node then set its position oops, emitter dot position equals uh, firework dot position like that position it's complaining because i haven't force unwrapped that and then add that to our scene so add child emitter so add it to the scene and finally remove that individual firework from our game remove from parent like that that's all it takes to remove and explode a single firework nothing new there it's all old code you should be able to read that in your sleep almost now we'll make the explode fireworks method plural fireworks which will call this explode firework method multiple times once each firework to explode it's going to remove things from the fireworks array so again we're going to loop through this thing backwards and then we'll have a lot of code in here to handle the score going up as the player selects more fireworks so they get more points for selecting more fireworks now there is one extra piece of complexity which is the fact that the fireworks array uh, stores a container node so we need to read the firework image out of its children array again okay here's the code so funk uh explode fireworks we launched them already explode uh fireworks plural then we'll have var num exploded equals zero that will go up to count the number of fireworks that were just exploded so we'll do var oh sorry for var i equals fireworks dot count minus one so looping backwards i is greater than equal to zero minus minus i so loop through the array backwards going down to zero then find the parent node which is there so fireworks i is the parent then get the firework out of it let firework equals parent dot children zero as sk sprite node so cast it in there because we now have to check its name uh, make sure it sounds we'll do uh, if firework dot name equals selected oops selected like that uh, great this is a selected firework explode firework parent destroy the parent node not the child node like that and remove it from our array uh, fireworks dot remove at index i because we're looping backwards that's fine and add one to num exploded that's another another one exploded so now at this point we know how high num exploded is how many fireworks did they destroy in this spread so we'll do switch num exploded uh, we need case zero uh, they did nothing <laughs> dope uh, just break do nothing case one we're going to add to the score plus equals 200 points so they get a fair number for destroying one for two we'll do score plus equals of 500 points so more than two individual fireworks uh, case three We'll do score plus equals uh, 1,500. So now it's a lot, lot more than destroying one at a time. So three times more than doing two. In case four, we'll say score plus equals 2,500. Finally, case five, uh, well, actually, just to put in a default case, because it's all the same, really, default case, everything else, no matter what else, score plus equals to 4,000. So 20 times more than one firework. So obviously, there's a massive 
emphasis now on destroying groups of fireworks. The last thing to do before this game is complete is to call explode fireworks. And that's very easy to do uh, using the shake gesture because behind the scenes there's a method being sent to view controllers when the device is shaken. All you have to do is catch it. Now, this is only sent to view controllers, it's not sent to game scenes, which is, but it's okay because behind our game, all along, has been this game view controller, which loads our scene here, creates it, yada, 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 there's all this work to show it in the game and rotate and stuff. Very, very uh, uninteresting code for now. We'll do more of that in Project 29, but for now it's not interesting. But we can add a method to this to catch motion began. So we can say uh, motion began, so when any motions began, so shaking the device, anyhow, we're going to call explode fireworks. Now this game view controller has no reference to our game scene. There's no way of accessing it directly. But it does have an SK view. You can see here, its view is an SK view. So we can pull out that SK view, and from the SK view we can pull out a game scene and call explode fireworks on that, with a little bit of typecasting basically. So we'll do let SK view equals view as SK view. Then let game scene equals SK view dot scene as game scene, like that. And using that, we can now say game scene dot explode fireworks, boom. And that's it, the game is done. I'm gonna try and run it now. It's quite a lot of coding without running it. Hopefully this will work first time. I'm feeling confident, feeling very confident. Uh, by the way, there is a, a button in the simulator called uh, shake gesture which simulates a shake gesture it's control command z or z so i'll do two reds control command z bang look at that blue blue control command z red red green ah oh, i got them all fantastic uh, of course my score is going up but uh you can't see it that is for your little bit of homework to make your own score label so control command z simulate shake gesture if you're running, running on a device remember give it a really good shake to explode it or add an explode button that's down to you. Um, but that's the game done. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. It certainly looks nice. It's been fun to make. You've learned some awesome new things. You know, NS time has been learnt now. Follow path's been learnt. Color blending. And of course, the shake gesture for those 10 minutes you keep it. Anyway, it is done. It's your game now. Please go ahead and customize it and have a lot of fun with it. For more information, see the website, hackingwithswift.com where you can buy this video and all videos in this series as glorious high resolution videos or download them as ebooks. Very, very cheap, just three bucks a shot and your support is hugely appreciated. Alternatively, find me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. If you have questions, complaints, amazing fireworks, high scores you want to share with me, pics or it didn't happen, uh, get in touch, follow me there. I would love to hear from you.